Once again, we send greetings to all our valued listeners and viewers throughout the whole world, more particularly to all Shepherd's Rod believers, and most especially to our beloved brothers and sisters in the United States of America. Good evening and may the good Lord bless you, brothers and sisters. This is our episode number six on the subject, The Woman and the Red Dragon. Now let us begin to us our page 71 it says note that the objects shown in the vision were in heaven not on earth therefore whatever these symbols may imply they must be of a heavenly origin to us our page 71 so the shepherd's rod is plainly telling that whatever the symbolization concerning the vision in revelation chapter 12 it must be heavenly origin for the fact that both the woman and the red dragon is found in heaven. Now let us read Revelation 12 verse 1 and verse 3. And it says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Verse 3 and there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. Revelation 12 verse 1 and verse 3. To repeat again, the shepherd's rod says in track number 5 page 26, symbolical or literal, which only when this question is rightly answered, well, we have the key, the correct interpretation to unlock this great symbolical treasure house of truth. And on page 41, it says, For if every term is not symbolical, how shall we differentiate those which are from those which are not? And how shall we know by which to define the truth? Or in other words, brothers and sisters, if Revelation chapter 12 is a symbolical prophecy, then for sure, every term written in that vision must be symbolical. Here in early writings, pages 92 and page 93, it says, I also stated that Satan appeared to be by the throne, trying to carry on the work of God. I will give another sentence from the same page. I turned to look at the company who were still bowed before the throne. Now this praying company was in this mortal state on the earth, yet represented to me as bowed before the throne. I never had the idea that these individuals were actually in New Jerusalem. Neither did I ever think that any mortal could suppose that I believe that Satan was actually in the new Jerusalem. But did not John see the great red dragon in heaven? Certainly, and there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great dragon having seven heads and ten horns. Revelation 12 verse 3. What a monster to be in heaven! Here seems to be as good a chance for ridicule as in the interpretation which some have placed upon my statements. So, the spirit of prophecy made it so plain that the heaven mentioned in the Bible could not be the literal heaven. Now, let us read words to the little flock. Words to the little flock on page 6. Words to the little flock on page 6. It says, the word heaven is applied to at least four places or things in the scriptures. First, it is applied to the paradise where St. Paul was taken in vision in 2 Corinthians 12 verse 2 and 
2 to 4. And that is the third heaven. Second, to the region of the sun, moon, and stars. Genesis chapter 1, verse 8 to 17. The constellations. Third, to the atmosphere which encompasses this earth, in which the fowls of heaven fly. So that is the outer space of the solar system. Revelation 19, verse 17 and 18. And the fourth, to the church of God on earth. Words to the little flat, page 6. And for sure, Revelation chapter 12, the heaven mentioned there would not be the third heaven, the paradise of God. Neither it can be the second heaven. Neither it is the first heaven, but rather, it must be pointed out to the church of God on earth. Now, this is the most important question. Does the heaven by which the woman locates is the same heaven by which the red dragon locates? Because in the vision of John the beloved, both the woman is in heaven, the red dragon is in heaven. Now, the only place by which heaven could apply on Revelation chapter 12, it is the church, the church of God on earth. Therefore, let us now ascertain clearly, does the church by which the woman locates is the same church by which the red dragon locates? Now, let us study Second Thessalonians. I would like to read this reading. Sit it in the temple of God, that is in Second Thessalonians, Chapter 2, let us read the verse. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. Who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse, verse 4. Now let us read this statement. It says, Seated in the temple of God, that is in the Christian church, it is by no means necessary to understand this of the temple at Jerusalem, which was standing at the time this epistle was written. The praise the temple of God is several times used with reference to the Christian church. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 16, Ephesians 2 verse 21, 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16 and 17, Revelation 3 verse 12. So here, brothers and sisters, it was predicted beforehand in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4, that Satan seated in the temple of God, which is the Christian church. And that is the fulfillment of Revelation 12, verse 3, that the red dragon is in heaven. Now, it could not be applied directly to the first advent of Jesus Christ. Because when the dragon obtained the ten horns and seven heads, in that period of time, the Christian church did not as yet in existence. The Christian church exists in 31 AD. Now let us read 2 SR on page 69. It says, The dragon with the seven heads and ten horns, with the crowns on the heads, appeared at the birth of Christ as previously explained and occupies the period parallel with the nondescript beast. The heads are represented by the biblical number seven, meaning completeness, and embrace every religious system in the days of Christ. As the dragon represents the devil who controls the heads, the symbol unmistakably denotes a complete apostasy. It is not intended to reveal that the pagan system of worship was heeded by the devil, for it has never been otherwise. It was the Jewish church that had apostatized, and that is what made the biblical number seven heads. And that is the statement in 2SR page 56 and on page 61 says attempts to establish ecclesiastical governments. The question may arise, what hindered Satan from establishing an ecclesiastical monarchy before the closing period of the Old Testament? The only answer that can be given is the Jewish nation permitted him to be cloud their eyes. They were told not to make a confederacy with the world, but unmindful of the command, they made a league with the Romans, and that is what helped Satan to accomplish his scheme. So this reading 
is clearly pointing out to the time when the dragon obtained the seven heads as illustrated in the symbolization by which, according to 2SR page 69, he had been able to conquer all the religious system in the days of Jesus Christ prior to his birth. And we know that that was in 27 BC. Now let us read 2SR 126 and 127. It says, quoting Daniel 8, verse 20 to verse 23, and it is concerning the exceeding great horn of Daniel 8, verse 9. And in the latter time of their kingdoms, the four Grecian divisions, a king of first countenance shall stand up. This scripture is applicable to the Roman monarchy, for this king must stand at the end of the reign of the kings of Grecia. The Ptolemies was the last of the four Grecian divisions to fall under the ascendancy of Rome. With the defeat of Antony and the death of Cleopatra about 27 BC, the noted dynasty of the Ptolemies came to its end and Egypt became a province of the Roman state. He was to stand up when the transgressors are come to the full. The Grecians have never been anything but transgressors. Therefore, the reference can be applied only to the Jewish nation, at which time the once favored people of God would have exceeded any previous record of both moral and spiritual corruption. The Jewish nation reached that condition of the time of the ascendancy of Rome and the first advent of Christ. Therefore, this king of first countenance is the Roman monarchy after the transgressors, which is the Jews, had come to their full. 2SR 126 and 127. So that description of the red dragon on the first advent of Jesus Christ occurred in 27 BC, even before Jesus Christ was born. Therefore, it could not be the fulfillment of Revelation chapter 12 verse 3 and also 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 4. Now let us go back to the statement given by Alonso Jones. Take on uh, consecrated way to Christian perfection. And let us read, I think by page 97. In reasoning with the people out of the scriptures, where in the scriptures did Paul find the revelation from which he could tell to the Thessalonians all this? It was in this eighth chapter of Daniel, where the apostle found where the apostle found it, and from this it was that he told it to them while he was there. For in the eighth chapter of Daniel are the very expression which he uses in Second Thessalonians, of which he says, "Remember ye not that when I was with yet with you, I told you these things." This fixes the time to be after the apostles' days, when Rome magnified itself even to the prince of the host and against the prince of princes and connects it directly with the falling away or apostasy which developed the papacy or Rome in its latter and ultimate pace. Now let us read verses 11 and 12 of Daniel 8 and it will be plainly seen that here is exactly the place where Paul found the scripture from which he taught the Thessalonians concerning the man of sin and the mystery of iniquity. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of hosts, and by him the daily was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down, and an horse was given him against the daily by the reason of transgression, and it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered. So it's concerning Daniel chapter 8. Verse 11 and verse 12, which is the subject mentioned by Apostle Paul in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now, Sister White connect Ezekiel 28 and 2 Thessalonians. Now, let us read again here in Bible commentary. Let us read 4 BC 1162 and 1163. Let us study closely, brothers and sisters. It says here, a general movement represented. I ask our people to study the 28th chapter of Ezekiel. The representation here, or the representation here made, while it refers primarily to Lucifer, the fallen angel, has yet a broader significance. Not one being, but a general movement is described and one that we shall witness. A faithful study of this chapter should lead those who are seeking for truth to walk in all the light that God has given to his people, lest they, sh lest they be deceived. 
by the deceptions of these last days. And then it says, soon to be fulfilled. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8, and Ezekiel 28, verse 2, and verses 6 to 10. The time is fast approaching when this scripture will be fulfilled. The world and the professedly Protestant churches are in this our day taking sides with the man of sin. The great issue that is coming will be on the seventh day Sabbath. 4 BC 1162 and 1163. So in that reading, we can immediately discern that Ezekiel 28 and 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 is closely connected. And also Daniel 8 verse 11 to 12. Now in the great controversy, let's read 390. It says, the Bible declares that before the coming of the Lord, Satan will work with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. And they that receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved will be left to receive strong delusion that they should believe a lie. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9 to 11 Not until this condition shall be reached and the union of the church with the world shall be fully accomplished throughout Christendom will the fall of Babylon be complete. The change is a progressive one and the perfect fulfillment of Revelation 14 verse 8 is yet future. Now in that reading, this word prophecy connect 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 to Revelation 14 verse 8. Now, we have now Ezekiel 28, Daniel 8, verse 11 and 12, 2 Thessalonians and Revelation 14, 8. Pointing to the same event, brothers and sisters, according to the voice of inspiration. In the Great Controversy, page 49, the Spur Prophecy called it the Great Apostasy. In the Great Controversy, page 49, it says here, The Apostle Paul, in his second letter to the Thessalonians, foretold the great apostasy which would result in the establishment of the papal power. He declared that the day of Christ should not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be rebuilt. The son of perdition who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he as God seated in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. That term the son of perdition is given to the red dragon as well as to the scarlet colored beast. Remember in 2SR on page 112, it says, His scarlet color denotes curse. The color is scarlet and red dragon or red is ultimately the same. 2SR 112, His scarlet color denotes curse. As it does on the dragon, the devil, in Revelation 12, 3. And the words go into perdition. Revelation 17, verse 11. Reveal that he is to bring this world to an end by a curse that will result in entire ruin, utter destruction, future misery, or eternal death. 2SR page 112. If you will look at the shepherd's rod on page 221. If you could see this uh, diagram in 1SR 221. His deadly one is healed. His deadly one is healed. Now look at brothers and sisters that diagram. Uh, Bitty Hotep in that diagram. You can see the falling away. And that is Second Thessalonians chapter 2. And you can see here 1929. That is 1929. Or in other words... We can easily discern that 2 Thessalonians did not find its perfect fulfillment during the Dark Ages. And let us see why the prophet placed the falling away. Brothers and sisters, I think that is, what is that date, 1852. Is there any date here? And it says falling away. And you can see 1929. The side, his deadly one was healed. Now let us focus now to our subject, brothers and sisters. That predicted event that the dragon is in heaven. And that heaven is not literal but symbolical. And the shepherd's rod says, whatever the symbols, it must be heavenly origin. Heavenly origin can be easily understood that that church originated or came from God. I would like to read uh, this vision 
and Allah has read here, brothers and sisters, page 44 and, and page 56. It says, uh, page 44 in early writings, Satan was trying his every art to hold them where they were until the ceiling was passed, until the covering was drawn over God's people and they left without a shelter from the burning wrath of God in the seven last plagues. God has begun to draw this covering over his people and it will be soon be drawn over all who are to have a shelter in the day of slaughter. God will work in power for his people and Satan will be permitted to work also. And here in page 56, it says here, I turned to look at the company who were still bowed before the throne. They did not know that Jesus had left it. So we can easily discern that there was a time by which Jesus Christ is sitting on that throne. Now let us read again. It says, I turned to look at the company who were still bowed before the throne. They did not know that Jesus had left it. Satan appeared to be by the throne trying to carry on the work of God. I saw them look up to the throne and pray, Father, give us thy spirit. Satan would then breathe upon them an unholy influence. In it there was light and much power, but no sweet love, joy, and peace. Satan's object was to keep them deceived and to draw back and deceive God's children. Early writings, page. 56. Now, I would like to read this reading in uh, Patriarchs and Prophets. Patriarchs and Prophets on where Satan is trying to establish his throne on this earth. Now, I would like just to read uh, here in page 41. But I'm looking really to that page. Satan is trying to establish his throne on this earth. I would like to read this one. It says, Patriarchs and Prophets, page 41. God permitted Satan to carry forward his work until the spirit of this affection ripened into active revolt. It was necessary for his plans to be fully developed, that their true nature and tendency might be seen by all. Lucifer as the anointed cherub had been highly exalted. He was greatly loved by the heavenly beings and his influence over them was strong. Was strong. God's government included not only the inhabitants of heaven, but of all the worlds that he had created. And Lucifer had concluded that if he could carry the angels of heaven within him in rebellion, he could carry also the worlds. He had artfully presented his side of the question employing sophistry and prod to secure his objects. His power to deceive was very great. By disguising himself in a cloak of falsehood, he had gained in advantage. All his acts were so clothed with mystery that it was difficult to disclose to the angels the true nature of his work until fully developed. It could not be made to appear the evil thing it was. His disaffection would not be seen to be rebellion. Even the loyal angels could not fully discern his character or see to what his work was leading. Patriarchs and Prophets, page uh, 41. But I'm really looking to that statement where Sister White says, uh, Satan is trying to establish his kingdom on, the, on this earth, uh, opposite to God's kingdom, brothers and sisters. Let me see if it says you. But I think there is another statement. It says, when Satan was thrust out of heaven, he determined to make the earth his kingdom. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 69. So when Satan was thrust out of heaven, he determined to make the earth his kingdom. So that is the determination of Satan to make this earth to become his kingdom. Now let us go back to our subject concerning uh, Revelation chapter 12. Now according to the shepherd's rod, let us go back again to, to SR page 113. It says, note that the dragon of Revelation 12 verse 3 has the crown on his head, not on his horns. It has been previously explained that when the crowns appear on the heads, it denotes a religious political system. So this reading in 2SR 113, the absolute answer to the question in 2SR page 56, let us read again. Attempts to establish ecclesiastical governments. The ecclesiastical governments is pointing to religious 
political system or church and state system. The question may arise, what hindered Satan from establishing an ecclesiastical monarchy before the closing period of the Old Testament? I think the absolute answer is the church. Because in the illustration on the red dragon, Revelation 12 verse 3, that the red dragon having seven heads indicates completeness by which the seven heads had been crowned. Do not forget that the symbolization of the red dragon, such revelation cometh from God. And that is the chosen medium of symbolization used by God to portray how the devil works. And first of all, the application in the Old Testament could not be the perfect fulfillment of Revelation 12 verse 3 because the words of the angel to John the Beloved, the fulfillment of his vision must be hereafter. According to track number 5 on page 32, it says, The statements which must shortly come to pass, Revelation 1 verse 1, And I will show these things which must be hereafter, Revelation 4 verse 1, Go to say that the revelation is given with the one particular object in view, of showing the things lying not behind, but ahead of John's time, with reference being made only incidentally to the past, in order to lay the necessary foundation upon to, upon, upon which to build the future. Track number 5, page 32. And the word hereafter, in 2 as R191, pointing to 1844 onwards, the door he saw opened is the veil between the holy and the most holy, for there is no other that had been kept close. Therefore, the word hereafter in chapter 4, verse 1, means from the time of the vision pointing forward to 1844. So, the voice of inspiration is plainly telling that the vision that was shown by God to John, the fulfillment must be from 1844 onwards. The application made in the past must be only the groundwork, right? In track number 5, page 34, it says, Fulfilled prophecies are seen, therefore, to be employed by the scriptures only as groundwork for that part of prophecy which is yet to be fulfilled. Track number 5, page 34. Now remember, the spirit of prophecy connect Ezekiel 28, Isaiah 14, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Daniel chapter 8, verse 11 and 12, to that predicted event in Revelation chapter 12 concerning the great red dragon. Now, we already read, brothers and sisters, in consec Consecrated Way to Christian Perfection, that the fulfillment of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4, that Satan seated in the temple of God, the temple of God mentioned there is the Christian church, and in the symbolization of the red dragon, it was illustrated that the seven heads is placed upon the dragon's heads and it had been crowned. So through the groundwork, we can easily discern that the symbolization indicates all religious system because number seven indicates completeness. So here in 2 SR page 69, as the dragon represents the devil who controls the heads, the symbol unmistakably denotes a complete apostasy. Complete apostasy meaning all religious system embrace every religious system in the days of Christ. And to repeat again, in the subject of the seven trumpets, it was illustrated when that predicted event had been fulfilled that the dragon has seven heads by which the seven heads had been crowned, it was illustrated that the place by which the dragon was standing became a bottomless pit. Revelation 9 verse 1. Now, do not forget, brethren, on our reading in 2 TJ 14, page 15, it says, Thus it is that chapters 8 and 9 brings us to the close of provision. Chapters 10 and 11 consequently sandwiched in chapters 8 and 9. We know that chapter 10 contain 11 verses and chapter 11, I think it contains 19 verses. Let's say chapter 11 contain 19 verses. 
Now the shepherd's rod made it so plain, brothers and sisters, that chapter 10 and 11 is sandwiched with chapter 8 and chapter 9. But specifically, logically, chapter 10 containing 11 verses, chapter 11 containing 19 verses, is sandwiched between Revelation 8 verse 13 and Revelation 9 verse 1. The word sandwich meaning in between. And it could not be the fulfillment. That the fulfillment of chapter 10 and chapter 11 is sandwiched between Revelation 8 verse 13 and Revelation 9 verse 1. But rather the understanding. Or in other words, we can easily discern that the statement in 2 TG 14-15 can be easily understood that Revelation chapter 10 and chapter 11, these two chapters will be completely unfolded between Revelation 8 verse 13 and before Revelation 9 verse 1. Or in other words, after Revelation 8 verse 13, then the unfoldment of Revelation chapter 10 and chapter 11, then after chapter 10 and chapter 11 will be completely unfolded, then chapter 9 verse 1 will be fulfilled. That is the only possibility. Now for example, how could you explain that statement in 2 TG 14 15? That chapters 10 and 11 is sandwiched between Revelation 8 and 9. If we will apply Revelation chapter 9 verse 1 to the first advent of Jesus Christ, that was 4 BC. Now how could it be? Chapter 10 and 11 is sandwiched saying from 4 BC backward, chapter 10 and 11 been fulfilled. It cannot be, right? 4 BC backward, chapter 10 and 11 had been completely unfolded. It cannot be. Because at that time, the book of Revelation were not yet written. So, in this instance, the occurrence or the application made by B.T. Hotep, that the fifth trumpet, the fulfillment of verse 1, is pointing to the birth of Christ on his first advent is only the groundwork. Why? I would like to read to you here in track number 5. Let us read the statement. Track number 5, page 32 and page 35. Track number 5, page 32. This basic truth that each period of destruction follows only after a corresponding period of sailing is corroborated by the fact that the symbolical locus which came up at the sounding of the fifth trumpet hurt only those men which had not the seal of God in their foreheads. All this shows not only that each trumpet follows its sealing period, but also that the nature of the trumpets reveals the punishment of those who failed to receive the seal in their particular periods. Page 35. Thus John first recorded the particulars of the seals, then the particulars of the trumpets. The seals come first because they reveal in the judgment the several periods of the sealing of the saints, which necessarily precede the matching several trumpet periods of destruction of those who did not receive the seal. Naturally then, the first seal must precede the first trumpet, the second seal, the second trumpet, and so on, like the needle and the shuttle rather than that all seven seals must precede all seven trumpets. Track number 5, page 32 and page 35. That is the divine principle so that you could be able to comprehend if, if the prophecy had been fulfilled. The divine principle must be each seal precedes each matching trumpet. The matching seal of the fifth trumpet must be the fifth seal. Now it was contrary to the proper application. The fifth trumpet commenced in 4 BC. The fifth seal commenced in 1500 AD. Let us read 2SR 221. 2SR 221. The first seal covers the entire period from Adam to the flood. The second from the flood to Abraham. The third from Abraham to Christ. The fourth seal from Christ to 1500 AD. The fifth seal from 1500 AD to 1755. 2SR 221. So, in that divine principle, in track number 5, page 32 and 35, we can safely conclude that the application made by B.T. Hotep is only the groundwork. It could not be the perfect fulfillment of the prophecy. If we will follow the absolute rule given by the shepherd's rod itself, that the seal must precede its matching trumpet. 
the matching seal of the fifth trumpet must be the fifth seal. The fifth seal begins in 1500 AD. Therefore, the perfect fulfillment of the fifth trumpet must be, brothers and sisters, from 1500 AD onwards, not from 1500 AD backwards. And it is very important because Revelation 9 verse 1 is pointing to Jesus Christ and closely connected to Revelation chapter 12. Because even the Bible, let us read here in Revelation chapter 12 and verse, verse 5, it says, And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Revelation 12 verse 5. This verse never been fulfilled on the first advent of Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ rule all nations with a rod of iron. This must be the fulfillment of Revelation chapter 19. Let us read. Revelation 19 verse, let us read. Verse 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a bisture deep in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the firstness and wrath of Almighty God. Revelation 19 verse 11 to verse 15. Now, to repeat again, brothers and sisters, Revelation 12 verse 5, it was not fulfilled on the first advent of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ never ruled all nations with the rod of iron. Now, thank you thoroughly, brothers and sisters. Here's another prophecy that I would like to connect. And I think Ezekiel, Ezekiel 21, on verse 27. Let me see. And let's read. It is Advent Review and Sabbath Herald. Let's read the statement. It says, But there are two comings of the seed. It is concerning Genesis 3 verse 15. We know the seed mentioned there in Genesis 3.15 is Jesus Christ. And here the voice of inspiration is only trying to explain that such event had not been fulfilled on the first advent of Jesus Christ. Now let us read. It says, But there are two comings of the seed. There is another, the second coming of Christ, as well as there was the first. Is it impossible that this second coming of the seed should be the coming referred to in this passage? There are other similar expressions in the scripture. For instance, Ezekiel 21 verse 27, speaking of the removing of the diadem and crown of the king of Judah, it says, I will overturn, overturn, overturn it, and it shall be no more until he come, whose right it is, and I will give it to him. What coming is this? The answer to this question can be given only by a consideration of the facts that in the case, he came, but instead of receiving that crown, he received a crown of thorns. Instead of being seated upon the throne, he was nailed to the cross. So we know that that was not the coming referred to in the text, but that it is his second coming. Seated upon the throne of his father David and having on his head many crowns, then it is that the kingdom of this world become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ, and He shall reign forever and ever. Revelation 11 verse 15. What is Revelation 11 verse 15? The sounding of the seventh trumpet. It is the sounding of the seventh trumpet. Right? Here in track number 5, it says here, the seventh trumpet. Track number 5, 114. The seventh trumpet the sounding of the seventh trumpet announces that the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our lord just as the angel explained in the days of the voice of the seventh angel when he shall begin to sound the mystery of god should be finished as yet declared to his servants the prophets 
Revelation 10 verse 7, Thus again it is seen, that as the events of the sixth trumpet draws to their end, and the events of the seventh begin, the work of the gospel, the mystery of God, is to be completed. Track number 5, page 114 and 115. In this study concerning seven trumpets, seven seals, let us distinctly separate the spiritual side and the material side. Because most people, they were observing and they were waiting for the material side and not the spiritual side. The spiritual things must be spiritually discerned, right? Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it, it says, But the natural, chapter 2 verse 14 in 1 Corinthians, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And it is pointing to the spiritual side, brothers and sisters. It needs spiritually discerned. Now let us read the shepherd's word in 2TG. It says here, 2TG number 1, on page 11, beginning from page 10. Ezekiel 21, verse 27. 2TG number 1, pages 10 and 11. I will overturn, overturn, overturn it, and it shall be no more until he come whose right it is, and I will give it to him, and I will give it him. In these chapters are brought to view both the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In this verse, God plainly declares that he was to make three overturnings, and that after that the kingdom was to be no more until he comes, whose right it is. That is, after the three overturnings, he whose right it is shall come and the kingdom shall be restored. The first overturning took place when Assyria overturned the house of Israel, the ten tribe kingdom. The second overturning took place when the king of Babylon overturned the house of Judah, the two tribe kingdom. And the third overturning took place when Titus in 70 AD destroyed Jerusalem. Thus it is seen that we are now living in the period after the third overturning, the period in which he whose right it is, is to come and set up his kingdom. 2 TG number 1 pages 10 and page 11. So it points out to... Jesus Christ, when Jesus Christ will, will come and Jesus Christ will set up his kingdom. Think it thoroughly, brothers and sisters. That is illustrated by the stone in Daniel chapter 2. Now, I would like to read 2SR 161 and 162. The great stone of Daniel 2 that smoothed the image on the feet is a symbol of the coming of Christ and the breaking of the image Denote, denotes the breaking of the nations to SR 161 and 162. That stone is the 144,000 cut out without hands. That event can never be fulfilled not until Jesus Christ will come as shown by God to John the Revelator in Revelation 14 verse 14 to verse 19. Now let us read track number 3. Let's read track number 3 from page page 48 and page 49. The quotation is Revelation 14 verse 14 to 16. Then it says, let us read track number 3 page 48. This coming of the Son of Man is plainly therefore not when the resurrected and the living righteous are caught up together to meet him in the air. For verses 17 to 20 following the ones quoted in the paragraph above, Revealed that after he came and ripped the earth, who are they to be harvested by the Son of Man? It is the 144,000. The same chapter and the same verse explained in 2TG 44. Let's read 2TG number 44, page 37. It says here, Revelation 14, verse 14 to 19. Who gathers the first fruits? If the first fruits gather the second fruits, let us find our answer by reading Revelation 14, 14 to 19. 2 TG 44, page 37. Then this is the commentary. Here we are again told that there are two reapings, one by the Son of Man and another by an angel. The reaping by the Son of Man precedes the reaping by the angel. The Son of Man, therefore, gathers the first fruits and the angel gathers the second fruits the binds not the fully ripe grapes he cast in the wine in the wine press the son of man himself obviously reaps the first fruits now 
ponder deeply, brothers and sisters, in the fifth trumpet. It is in the fifth trumpet that the subject of the five symbolical months can be found, right? And we need to study closely that subject, the 12 figurative months. We have a separate subject concerning the 12 figurative months. Now, the shepherds had already explained here in track number 3, pages 48 and page 49, that Revelation 14, verse 14 to 16, is the coming of the Son of Man to this earth and such purpose of Christ's coming is to harvest the 144,000, to reap the 144,000. And that is why I would like to remind again and again, brethren, it is an erroneous idea that God demanded the first fruits. God requires only the first of the first fruits. I would like to read again this reading. To symbolic code number 10, page 9. To symbolic code number 10, page 9. From these scriptures, we are not, however, to draw the erroneous conclusion that all of the first fruits are demanded by the Lord. God requires only an offering of the first of the first fruit. And we know the word offer in the subject of the seven seals pertains only to the living saints, brothers and sisters. And we know the first of the first fruits, that is the wave ship. And let us study now closely concerning such ceremonial system, the wave ship and the wave loads. Now, I would like to emphasize again, brothers and sisters, 100% as far as the shepherd's rod is thus concerned, the first of the first fruits is pointing to you and I, shepherd's rod believers. For example, here in the old symbolic code. 9 symbolic code, 1 to 12, page 7. 9 symbolic code, 1 to 12, page 7. Let us all, as a obedient band, remember that we are called to the high office of conservators of the gospel, restorers of the old paths, repairers of the bridge. We are called as the first of the first fruits from Laodicea, and thus we are to serve as saviors to and of Laodicea. 9 symbolic code, 1 to 12, page 7. God required only the first of the first fruits. God did not demand the entire first fruit. Brethren, if you only know the exact period of time, you will understand that we are now living in the very time by which first of the first fruits will be offered. And I would like to say to you, this very year, 2020, the first of the first fruits will be offered. And that is why here in 1TG, I love so much this passage. It says, 1TG 23, page 9. And how glad we ought to be for the privilege to be among the first of the first fruits. Let us be thankful to the Lord to be among that first of the first fruits. That is God required at this time only the first of the first fruits. Or in other words, brothers and sisters, it is high time now. We all the obedience, shepherds, not believers, we need now to study and see our condition, our situation. Brethren, you know the situation of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and the Davidian is still the same. The Seventh-day Adventist Church is preaching the gospel to all Sunday keepers. And they are trying to convert Sunday keepers to keep the Sabbath, to be a Sabbath keeper. While in reality, they themselves, there are many things that God asking for them. Now, the same with the Davidian. The Davidian is going to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And trying to convert to become a shepherd's rod believer. While they themselves were divided into different groups. To repeat again, the present truth lesson is that let us now focus our attentions to ourselves. Let us examine ourselves now. I remember Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 27. and says, 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 27. But I keep under my body and bring it unto subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be cast, should be a cast away. It says, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a cast away. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 27. Apology, brothers and sisters. If we as the Bidian profess to be a shepherd's rod believers. If in reality, we are only picking those portions in the shepherd's rod, the same with the situation of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Here in 2TG number 2, 
it says here in page 19, 2TG number 2, page 19. Inspiration now turns from the shepherds and speaks to the flock, to the lighty, and warns that there are two kinds of cattle, two classes of lighty. We know lighty is membership. So there are two kinds of membership, rams and he goats. This is therefore a warning to them, and we must not fail to declare it, and they must not fail to hear and act, to hear and to act. For this very cause are the timely greetings published and scattered as the leaves of autumn. And then it says, part of the cattle are accused of being selective, of eating and drinking only that which is to their liking, and of trampling the residue. They accept whatever truth is agreeable to them, but reject the rest. Here we shall cite an example. My labor has been most discouraging, as I have seen that what God designed has not been accomplished. These brethren took the, this position. We believe the visions, but Sister White in writing them put in her own words, and we will believe that portions which we think is of God and will not heed the other. Testimonies, volume 1, page 234. 2TG number 2, pages 19 and page 20. Hoping that we are not like them. We believe all the things that had been written in the Shepherd's Rod publications. We believe all the things that had been written in the writings of Sister White. We believe all the things that had been written in the Bible. And we accept all the messages in 1888. Brethren, hoping that you will continue listening this program because there are many, many things to learn. There are many, many precious truths recorded in the shepherd's rod by which such understanding was not given by God to be haunted because it was preserved by God. Such truth is intended to the 144,000 living saints. I remember the statement in track number 6. It says, track number 6, let me see the statement. It says here, Page 31 and page 32. A world of butter producing milk. This noble creature gives such a volume of milk that we are compelled to separate the cream and are able to dispense only, only it. The milk we preserve. How could you preserve the milk? By turning it into butter. So the butter or the milk that had been preserved by, according to this reading, is pointing to the butter, butter and honey. This plenitude bespeaks are being blessed with such a fullness of truth, milk, that all we can do is to send out the high points, the butter or cream, reveal truth, never before having amassed itself into such an inexhaustible store as it has today, completes the evidence that the interpretation of this prophecy is correct, and that the shepherd's rod, which contains the truth, for this time has caused the land to flow with milk and honey. Track number 6, page 31 and page 32. We will continue this subject, brothers and sisters, and hoping the good Lord will bless us. Thank you very much for listening and viewing this program. And we will continue this subject on our next episode. Have a wonderful evening.